Hello friends and welcome to this Kubernetes EKS cluster setup. So this video I am creating on public demand. So lots of friends ask me to create a video on with the instructions step by step on creating the EKS cluster setup. Okay, so in this session we are going to cover uh, what are the different ways through which we are going to set up or we can set up the Kubernetes cluster and manage it. So managing regarding things, all the things we, can, we are going to do with the kubectl utility. But regarding the uh, setup creations for the Kubernetes cluster, there are several ways and we are going to discuss on all those things. How to use the EKS uh, CTL utilities? So this is uh, the main agenda of today's sessions. So we are, we are concentrated on the EKS CTL after discussing about the different way to set up the cluster. So this cluster will be of two nodes. The EKS cluster we are creating of two nodes. And we will going to verify and validate the cluster as well by executing some of the commands. So let's jump to the first uh, uh, the Kubernetes setup. How we can. So this is the Kubernetes uh, IO page. And here we can see what are the different ways where we can use the setup for the Kubernetes so for the production environment. If you expand a little bit, you can see that there are several ways to do a setup for with using the Kubernetes. So one are the using the Kube ADM. You can uh, use the pops as well and Kube's spray also. So these are the way through which we can uh, do the Kubernetes uh, setup. But in this particular video, we are going to use Trunky Cloud Solutions. For this, you can see that there are several cloud provider on which we can create a Kubernetes cluster. So for the AWS, we can use the EKS, the Amazon Elastic Container Services. We can use the Alibaba also or Azure also provided in simple way. There are several providers which facilitate you to create a Kubernetes cluster like Digital Ocean also that we can uh, we already used this uh, functionality or this feature of the Digital Ocean in my past video. In this particular video, we are concentrating on the EKS. Okay, so we are going to start the creating of the cluster using the EKS okay so for this we have to create a instance of Linux instance you can say which is the bootstrap or you can say that the launcher where we are from where we are, we are going to give the command using the EKS CTL utilities so that um, the, all the cluster will be created in the AWS so we will create a Linux instance of uh, instance type t2, t2 micro because we don't need uh, the largest instance for the launcher, uh, you can say our bootstrap uh, machine from where we can execute our commands. And we are going to provide all the roles, uh, IAM roles, because, uh, because when we use the EKS utility, there are several roles required uh, for that instance to perform the activities. Okay, so we will going to provide all the things because when we execute the command at the back end, it's going to create a cloud formations using the cloud formations, either using the um, create for the create also for delete also. It's using the cloud formations related things. So we have to provide all the necessary roles. It will create some IAM role also internally for using so we have to provide the IAM. So we are going to provide all the necessary roles to the AWS EC2 instance, the launcher instance, which we are discussing. So in this particular video, we are going to use the EKS CTL utility that uh, used to help us to set up the Kubernetes setup on the Amazon EKS. We can set up uh, using the COPS and uh, Cube ADM as well which already we discussed, but in this essence, we are going to use the utility EKS CTL for all the installations. One more thing, 
we can do the setup using the console as well if you go to the service and kubernetes cluster we can create a cluster from this place as well using the creating the cluster in this way we will provide the name of the cluster and the kubernetes version what we have to use but i assume this is a something difficult way to set up the cluster we need to understand about how each service works and how its configuration related to each other so it's a bit um, difficult for uh, newcomers to set up using the interface so in this particular session we are going to use eks ctl utility to do all the setups so to start we need to create a ec2 machine and then we are going to do the installations for all the related things so you can uh, create our ec2 machine first of t2 micro as we already discussed so here we are going to create a ec2 instance we will name it as anything that you like like for me uh, eks client i can say okay from where we can access the kubernetes cluster and uh, create also manage also and um, if required we can destroy also okay so amazon linux instance k2 micro all things looks fine okay so this is the new interface i am using the fit here for this particular but when we are creating the uh, the kubernetes cluster we are at that time we will use the t2 small so it not comes in the fit here you have to spend some money okay so all things look good amazon in the fit here t2 micro uh, regarding the key pair i will use existing one the vpc is a default one okay for the security groups either i can use the existing one or you or you can create a new one so i am going to allow for the ssh also and uh, for the http also https also so i am going to tick all the things and it will create a new security group for us and it will attach to the instance after creation okay the size i don't have any problem with the size i don't want to exceed it for the details i am not going to change anything okay i don't have the user data i don't want any cheese pre configured so now i am going to launch the instance all things looks good to me i am going to launch it so it will launch a new instance of k2 micro for on that particular machine we are going to install all the things so eks client it's currently under pending let it be available i am doing all the things in mumbai region which is very close to me okay now machine is running so i am going to pick the public ip okay and then i am going to run the mobile stream launch the establish the connection just paste the ip here using the private key okay so user name is ec2 ec2 user okay uh, let me do increase the font size Let's clear the screen Okay, fine. Sudo su. Okay, so now I have to check the AWS version. AWS. It's pre-installed in this machine, but it's using the the older version. And what the document says about it? Okay, regarding the AWS CLI, let me open this link.
Okay, it says that the version should be means if we take the latest one, that will be fine, or better than this one. Okay, so better we will do the installations of the AWS CLI as per the documents. So it will uh, if you have already set up, as in my case, it will override it. So for the Linux instance, I am going to run few of the commands here for the Linux. I am just copying it. Okay, so it will uh, download it and then then install it using the sudo command. So it's quite simple. First downloading and then installing the AWS CLI again, and then we will check the version. I'm going to paste it here. Okay, install it. So it will install. And now I am going to check the version again. So it's showing me the older one uh, because I don't have to. You know, mean see, I have to ex exit it first. I am currently in the same session, and then again, sudo su with the root user. I am going to check the version. So you can see that uh, the version get upgraded. Okay. So, so that this thing is done. Now I am going to install the Cube CTL. Let me close it. So as per the documentations, I have to install the Cube CTL. So if you check the Cube CTL version, you will not find it. So you have to first uh, make, uh, install it as per the instruction. So I am going to the link. For the installation, so you can see I am referring uh, the, the documentation each time. So you can also do it in the same way. I am going to Linux, taking the latest one, just copy it and execute it here. It will not take uh, more than 30 seconds. Okay, it's done. So you can check the first. Uh, it's get downloaded. So you can find it here, the kubectl. Okay. So I am going to give the uh, the execute uh, permissions. So you can refer the documentation as well. So you can see that it's uh, giving the execute to that particular downloaded file. And then uh, making a, you can say it's uh, setting the or, or or moving that particular file to the appropriate locations so that uh, we can execute that particular command to sit here. Okay, so let me do that. Ch mode plus x for that cube CTL. Okay, so I make it executable. Let me move it to the this location user local and bin. Why I am moving it? Because if you echo the path, you can find that this is one of the path listed here. So if if I move that particular uh, binaries to that particular location, we can execute the kubectl command from any of the path. Okay. So we can verify the kubectl version as well. So you can see that uh, version is 1.23. Some version, okay. So it installed. So we already verified the kubectl version. Now it's time to install the EKS CTL utility. Again, I am referring to the documentations. Now I have to install the EKS CTL. After that, we will provide the IAM create a role with all the permissions. Okay. So now I am going to refer this documentations. Here we have the EKS need to be verified if already installed. As this is the first machine, so we don't have it any. If we run the EKS CTL version, we will not find anything installed. You can try it as well. EKS CTL version. So the command not exist because I never. This is the first machine. Okay. So now I am referring to the documentation again, and I have to copy this for the Linux machine. And now I am installing the EKS CTL. 
so you can see that it in, uh, installed all the things means it downloaded all the things into the temp directory so we have to move to this temp directory where we find this particular EKS because as per the command it's downloaded in the temp directory okay EKS CTL so we move it there after that we will move it again the same locations EKS CTL what is the path user local and then bin okay so it's get moved now if we check the EKS CTL version again we will get the appropriate version so we install all the requirements for that particular installation of the Kubernetes cluster now what we have to do we have to create a role and the role will be according to whatever the as per the requirements so we have we will have to provide the the permissions of the cloud formation also for VPC also for EKS IAM role also so we are going to look into it how, what types of uh, uh, IAM roles we uh, means what type of permissions we have to assign into the IAM roles so uh, now we are going to create a role so for that we will again go to the AWS console here we will uh, search for the IAM okay now we are going to create a roles okay create a new role so this role i am creating for the ec2 machine so i am going to select it here ec2 okay now what role we required we required first the ec2 full access ec2 full and search it for that particular ticket and then search for the next one what other permissions we require for that role i am full access i am giving the full access because i, I want the things uh, in the simplest form okay this also i take now administrative access Okay, and the next one is AWS Cloud Formations. Cloud Formation. Okay, search it. Full access of the Cloud Formations. Okay, after that, I will put click on the next. Okay, so it will list all all the things: AWS Cloud Formation Full Access, Administrator Access, IAM Full Access. Amazon EC2 access. I am giving the full access to make this thing simple. You can uh, refine the things accordingly as per your requirement. Okay. The name of the role it is mandated to provide the role so that we can uh, link it with the EC2 instance. Uh, let it be EKS role. Okay. Create the role. So you can find that the role is created. Now I have to jump to the EC2 machine to just link it with that particular role. Okay, I am going to attach it. First, I have to click it for this particular instance. After that, I have to go to the action, then security. Okay, and then modify the IAM role. Here you can find that uh, role which we created. Okay, update the IAM role. Okay, so we provided all the roles necessary role to create the Kubernetes EKS cluster. Okay, to that particular machine. So now it's time to create a, a cluster. Okay, so I am going to write some command to create the cluster. So what is the command we have to create? So now you have to uh, to give the command like EKS CTL create cluster. The name of the cluster is Alok DevOps and the reason is AP South 1. 
and the node type i am going to provide the t2 dot small okay uh, this is the minimum uh, you have to keep a uh, instance type as node type as minimum uh, with have which have the two cpu and uh, we will not going to provide the node minimum size or maximum size it will take uh, it will create a two worker node automatically okay so let's create it so you can see that the, now the cluster started to, to doing all the setups and back side it's creating start creating the uh, cloud formations related things before that we have we don't have any cloud formation stuff now you can see that it's started the creation is in process so at back end when i execute some command either for the creations of the eks cluster or deletions it will use the cloud formation template for the creations also for the deletions also and that's why we required uh, of that type of permissions related with the iam because the uh, cloud formations create several uh, roles or that's why it's required the full access of the iam at the time of creating the kubernetes cluster okay so this will take some time you can uh, take consider it as approximately 20 minutes for creating the kubernetes cluster once it comes up i will validate the kubernetes cluster by executing few commands okay till now i am pausing this video so now the Kubernetes uh, cluster has been created and you can see that it's taken around uh, 20 minutes approximately, 88 is it started and it's uh, done in 26 minutes. So it's using the cloud formation template to creating all the uh, required thing for the cluster and it created uh, two instance and we are going to uh, see, look into it all the things one by one. So you can see that uh, the, now the cluster is creating using the cloud formations template and uh, it's able to create the kubernetes cluster and the node as well okay so we will verify the node first we will go to the kubernetes cluster either it's under the active mode or not so you can see that the cluster it has been created and it has the version 1.22 and the provider is eks so the cluster is successfully created now we go to the EC2 instance to check for the node. So you can find that by default as we discussed, we are not provided the node minimum size or maximum size. By default, it creates the two node. Okay. And you can find the instance type as T2 is small. Okay. So all things looks perfectly fine. We will prove do the validations by using the kubectl command as well get node so you can find that the, we uh, get the two node which is currently ready it stays as we have in the screen as well okay so this is the node and we are going to uh, create some deployment as well for the testing two node has been created okay kubectl create deployment the name of the deployment is web app we will use the nginx image if you are not familiar with such uh, those commands which i am currently typing you can refer my uh, previous video on the kubernetes topics in which i discussed all the things regarding the how we can create the power replica set deployment and all these things okay so image name is nginx okay and the port that we are going to use is uh, 80 okay replicas we are providing the two replicas okay so it will create a deployment and deployment after that it will create the replica sets so kubectl get deployment You can find the web app deployment currently one by two months means that the two out of two pod one pod is in the ready state okay let me check the queue 
CGL get RS dot replica set the start sort code is RS and you can find here that this is the deployment name and this is the ASCII value for the replica set desired is 2, current is 2 and ready is 2 means both the pod is currently up kubectl get pod or you can say get pod PO for the short code of the pod is PO okay so this is the deployment on this basis we can identify this is the deployment name this is the replica set name and this is the pod name okay so it's contact making all these things to, to pod is currently running so now we have the you can say the nginx applications is running web server is running how we can going to access it so we are going to expose create a service qctl expose okay uh, deployment name of the deployment is web app okay the port will be 80 okay and the type is load balancer okay so it will create a low, uh, the application load balancer it will create the application load balancer we can verify it from here let's see to instance and the load balancer we currently don't have any load balancer let me create it so you can see that it created the service QCTL get all it will list all the things whatever we created so you can find that this is the default services and this is the web app services that uh, we created just now uh, so you can uh, find it here as well if I refresh it you can find now the services in the cluster the the create the load balancer get created by the services okay uh, this service when i access this service it will uh, load balance between the two particular port this one or this one to get the informations okay so either we can use this one we copy it and by default if you see it's uh, running on the port 80 okay this is the this is the default port HTTP port and this is the node port of the particular uh, services. Okay, so I'm going to access it. Not that even. Let me complete again. This one. Copy and then paste in without any port number. So you can see that the uh, Nginx application is currently running. Okay. So what we created, we created two pods using the deployment and then um, uh, we are uh, tagging with the services for the load balancing things. So we are accessing the load balancer and that load balancer is interacting with the services. Okay. And that services have some end point with particular pod IP. So it will routing that particular request uh, to that particular pod, which we created with the Nginx APIs. So now, uh, once we done with all these things, we will need to uh, delete the cluster as well. The commands will be EKS CTL delete cluster, and the name of the cluster is Alloc DevOps. And the reason is in which the cluster I created. Reason is AP South one. So you can see that uh, it's uh, starting all the activity, and again the it, uh, uh, you can refer to the cloud formations. So all the time using the cloud formations template for the creations also and for the deletions also. So one you can find it here. It will uh, very soon create a uh, one stack here with the deletions like delete in progress. Again, 
it's using the cloud formations with all the necessary rules that we already provided. So it will in this way we can create a, or delete the Kubernetes cluster. So hope you guys like this video and gives me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you didn't subscribe my channel yet, please do subscribe it. This will motivate me. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day.